Good. You're the deliverer of bad news. I am. Kind of, aren't That's you? right. Bad news, Barbie. Sabine Lomas. I had the pleasure of seeing the pilot already, oh. so I kind of feel bad because everybody who I'm interviewing on behalf of have not had that pleasure. Right. However, I'm going to go plow forward anyway. Right. So what's interesting about your character is she comes in at a point when everybody's kind of, what the heck is going on, and she just pretty much says, here's, here's what's happening, no answers at all, you're just going to do what I say. Right. Uh, explain that a little bit. Where your character comes in, what her purpose is, and what drives her. Well, Sabine's a very high-ranking federal official with a medical background, and normally when you know health situations occur, they're taken care of at a much more civilian lower level. So she's coming in and she says, you know, in the beginning, you know, when it, with her entrance, she says, if I'm here, it's really bad news. So get quiet and get ready and do as I say. I mean, she's, she's sort of like Harvey Keitel as the cleaner when he comes in to sort of clean up people's messes. She's really no nonsense. And she would have been, you know, when we did our research that one of the developers, Tom Farrell, was saying this particular person would have been appointed specifically by the President of the United States. So, so the, this role is, is, is actually fulfilled by a, a real human being in real life and they oversee the CDC and all of these health departments. Uh, and they pray that something like this will never actually occur. And what's extraordinary is that this really can happen. And when we, when we consulted with the CDC, they said this is absolutely realistic. You know, these avian flus get to a point where they mutate either naturally or through some sort of um, inorganic sort of form and, and they can suddenly be transmitted human to human. And at that point, and in this, in this particular case, this virus proves to be in the pilot 100% deadly. In, all, in the cases of all of its victims. Can you watch the series on Witch's Face? I've watched a few episodes and then I just made a very specific decision to stop watching because I don't want to be attached to something that has to go in a different direction than the way that we, we are taking it. This is now based in a very different culture and a very different society which gives us a lot of scope to explore it in different ways. Okay, my question for that is because you seem to have an, uh, an eye for conversation with, with Lex and, and the way you're communicating with him which is even though you're on the outside and not supposed to be on the inside because you're not on the need to know, mm -hmm. she, she seems to have something else in mind. I think that, she, I mean, there's definitely a mystery underlying this story and that will unfold for all of us. I've been given a bit of information that other people haven't, so I'm just waiting for the rest of the world to catch up because it's like, you know, hard to sleep at night knowing what others don't. So in a similar position to you having seen the pilot when others haven't. It's a burden uh, and, an, and exciting. But, um, I mean, it's a difficult position that she's been placed in and she understands what happens to human nature and what happens to a mob and how people become traumatized at the individual level and at the group level and she has this onerous responsibility to make sure that she takes what is a controversial action but takes it necessarily because the stakes are so high so when she identifies Lex as a person she's actually as honest and candid with him as she's allowed to be in her position and in a way she slightly oversteps because she trusts that he's going to be able to help her when a lot of others won't have that presence to be able to do so. Right. 